title of my message today is Passion for Souls. How many of you have a soul? <laughs> All right. So a soul, the soul is the part of us that's not visible. So when we look to, to each other, uh, some have more hair, some are younger, some are older, uh, skinny, uh, you know, we have all, all shapes here and uh, different colors, light colors. So, so this is our body, but God gave us a soul, a living soul. And uh, the, the problem with the soul of man is that when we were born into this world, the world is in sin. And because we live in a world that, uh, um, that was uh, cursed by, by sin, God established a plan in order to reconcile our soul with Him. And, and so uh, when we have an encounter with God, we are challenged to give Him our soul. And when we give Him our soul, uh, He does something very special. We are born again in the Spirit. Now we are body, soul and spirit. Today I'm going to talk to you about passion for souls. And I'd like to start with a troubling uh, scripture, which is in Psalm 142 in verse 4. And this passage bothered me because, uh, you know, it's, it's a cry for help. It's a prayer. And, uh, and um, uh, the last part of the, of the verse says, No man cared for my soul. No man cared for my soul. And I believe that there are, there are billions of people in the world, and here in Montreal there are millions of people, uh, uh, that think that nobody cares. Nobody cares for their soul. And um, sadly, we have Christians that, uh, uh, who are saved, hell-proof, heaven-bound, etc. But they don't care about the souls of the lost. So if someone is, is going on the way to hell, we have hundreds or thousands of Christians just here in our, in our area. We have a lot of Christians. But it's not that they care much. And you know what? People that are lost, they feel that we don't care. But you know, I, I believe that God wants to give us a level of passion that we start to care more for those that are on their way to hell. I'm not trying to tell you that you don't care. I'm telling you that this is the condition that we see in Christianity today. And this is the image that people have of church. That church is a group of people, you know, they're very judgmental, they criticize others, they think they're superior to others, they say, oh, we have God and you, you don't. And the, the condition of the world is very similar to what is written in Psalm 142 verse 4, where, where the psalmist says, no man cared for my soul. So it's like nobody cares. And, and you talk to people that are on, on drugs, people that are, uh, you know, doing uh, um, uh, alcoholism and prostitution and all sorts of sin and gambling and all things around, and they just say, nobody cares, who cares? And they do all sorts of things and they say, nobody cares, who cares if I do this, if I don't? You know, guess what? God cares. God cares and so do we. Let me illustrate this with this passage in Matthew chapter 9. And it's talking about Jesus. In verse 36 it says, When he, Jesus, saw the crowds, he had compassion for them, because they were harassed and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to the disciples, The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, pray earnestly to the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into the harvest. So many times we quote this scripture and we think about uh, what Jesus was saying. You know, pray that I will send the workers into the harvest. Who are the workers? Are the ones that care. People that care. And it says that when he saw the crowds, he had compassion. He, and compassion, it's, it's a love for those crowds because he realized that there was no leadership. Nobody cared. And you know, also many Christians today think that nobody cares. And the way you, you need to be sure that people care about you, the first thing you need to, to have is a pastor, is a mentor, a shepherd. You can call it a pastor, you can call it a, it's a friend, a Christian friend. But when I'm calling, when I'm saying a pastor, it's not the position of the pastor of the church. But guess what? Here in the church, we are called to take care of the flock. And, and the pastor of the church takes care of the church, 
but you are also care to take care of your neighbors, of people in your family. We have a function of shepherding people in the sense that people in this world are lost and they need someone to give them guidance, someone that really cares for them. So again, there's this cry, no man cared for my soul. No man cared for my soul. And, and the, the condition of the world is exactly like this. I don't know if you have this condition. But Jesus had a great passion for souls. In Romans chapter 5, verse 8, it says, But God shows His love for us, in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. This is how God loves us. He cares. He cared to the point of sending His Son to be born just like us. So God humbled Himself to be born just like a human. And Jesus Christ was born out of a woman. He was raised in a humble place. And, and then uh, got to a, a point in His life in which He was the shepherd teaching others. He showed His care for others by healing thousands of people. He resurrected the dead. He gave sight to the blind. He preached the gospel. He did amazing things. He really cared. He was the good shepherd. He, and, and you know what? He gave his life for the sheep. So he gave his life for you. God cared so much for you that he sent his son. Now, I'm talking about having a passion for souls. And we know that God has a passion for souls. But what about us? How can we have a passion for souls? Now, three things. First, we need to have the absolute assurance of our own salvation. If we're not sure what's going to happen after we die in this body, we will never have passion for souls. Never. Because it's when we have the vision of heaven and hell that we understand God's plan and how God was so passionate for us that He sent His Son to die for you, to die for me, while we were still separated from Him. So we need to have this assurance of our own salvation. Number two, we need to be separated for God. This is, this is holiness. And to be separated for, for God, it's when we decide that we're not going to live just as we want, but we're going to go into the Bible, and we're going to see what is God's plan for us, and we separate ourselves from the world. And finally, number three, we must have the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Without the anointing of the Holy Spirit, you will not have passion for souls. That, this is why uh, there's a lot of people that are uh, truly uh, you know, convinced that they are saved, but they don't have passion for souls. It's when they don't have the anointing of the Holy Spirit. So we need to ask the Holy Spirit. If you have these three things, I can guarantee you, you start to have a passion for souls. You start doing things out of the ordinary. And uh, it, it, let me tell you that if a church is not inviting people from the world to come to church, Something is wrong. And it's not with God. It's, it's about our flame, that passion that needs to burn inside of our heart. And if it's not burning, guess what? You, you need to get close to the fire and you'll get on fire too. So we need to build that fire. Now Jesus called us to be fishers of men. And uh, one of the, the first things he said to Simon in Luke 5.10, he says, he said to Simon, do not be afraid. From now on, you'll be catching men, or you'll be, become a fisher of men. And, and this happened right after. He did a huge miracle. Because, you know, Simon, Simon Peter was uh, trying to, to catch fish all night, and he couldn't catch anything. So Jesus came, and he said, go there to get that other side, and, and, uh, and throw the nets to that other side. And uh, against... Uh, any human probability, he decided to obey. And there, there was a miraculous catch. And he was such a miracle that he realized that Jesus wasn't just a man. That he was a prophet and a mighty one. He was someone really deeply connected to God. So when he approached Jesus, he was afraid. And Jesus detected the fear in his life. So he said, do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. Because from now on, you're not going to catch fish, you're going to catch men. And, the, and this, this is a, a, an awesome statement. Now in Mark 1.17, Jesus said to the other disciples, Follow me and I'll, I'll make you become fishers of men. So when you have an encounter with Jesus, you become a fisher of men. You become a soul winner. You have passion for the souls. 
Have you ever seen uh, someone addicted to fishing? Do you know any, any people that are addicted to fishing? <laughs> I still remember my, my brother-in-law, he could, he could spend the whole weekend fishing, you know, with, uh, and, and uh, sometimes it was little fish that we would catch, but he was so excited and all that, that things. I'm more of a hunter than a fisherman. But, uh, but uh, uh, because it, sometimes it's boring for me to be there <laughs> waiting for the fish to bite, I prefer to, to hunt. But, but anyway, some people are so addicted to fishing that it's their passion. It's their passion. They buy all the gear and they try to fish here and fish there. And someone tells, oh, I went there. Oh, and they go there. There's even TV shows. Yeah. Yeah. TV shows. I, 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 I cannot understand those shows, but uh, I try to watch them. You know, they, they, they catch the fish, they take a picture, they throw the fish in the water. I like to eat the fish. <laughs> I like to eat it. <laughs> but anyways, you know, uh, this becomes kind of an addiction. Let me tell you, when you have passion for souls, you, you know, you don't talk about anything else. And, and that's why sometimes it's very hard to be in the presence of someone who is nuts for Jesus, who is addicted to Jesus who loves the Lord with all his might and all his strength. And when you show that you care, you catch souls for the Lord. And you need, in order to do so, again, you need to have 100% assurance of salvation. Now, 2 Corinthians verse 5, uh, chapter 5, verse 17, it says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. The old things are uh, passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Now, I told you, when we give our soul to the Lord, He makes us born again. So the things of the past are gone. It doesn't matter if you did drugs, if you were robbing banks, it doesn't matter what you did. When you give your life to the Lord, guess what happens? He forgives you. He forgives you. He cares, but He doesn't want you to continue in the same lifestyle because He has better for you. And, and He has salvation for you. He has something really special for you. It's, it's a matter of accepting what He has. And if you accept, the Bible says that all things become new because the former things passed away. 1 John 1, 1.9, it says, if, if we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So we couldn't stand in the presence of God because of the burden of our sin. But when we receive that forgiveness, He's faithful and He's just. And He cleanses from all our unrighteousness. This is why, you know, before you, you were even killing people, doing evil stuff, you know, robbing people, selling drugs, doing all sorts of bad things. Now when you are in Christ, you're a new person. People might, might not understand that. I was reading uh, today an interview uh, of that man, uh, Mike Tyson, and he says, I'm changed, nobody believes him. You know, he has that tattoo in his face, <laughs> and I remember when he, he was, uh, you know, in that fight and he uh, beat the ear <laughs> of the other guy, and you know, all, all those things, and now he says, I'm a new man, I'm a new creature. Uh, creature. Nobody believes him. Nobody believes him. And you know what? Nobody cares, but let me tell you, God cares. And so we, we need to care too, because there's a cry in the heart of man. And that this cry is the, the cry for God, the cry for salvation. God says when a person is saved, in their sins and iniquities, I will remember no more. This is amazing. It's in the book of Hebrews chapter 10, verse 17. So God forgets your iniquities. And you, you might uh, uh, even ask yourself, if God knows all things, how can He not remember our sins? Because God says in the Bible, I, even I am the one who wipes out your transgressions for my own sake, and I will not remember your sins. And this is repeated in the Old Testament and in the New Testament. God chooses not to remember your sins. It's not that He doesn't know about your sin. He knows everything about you. But He chooses never to bring them again. Sometimes we, uh, we kind of chastise ourselves by thinking in the, in the bad things we did. And, and we say, oh, I did this, and can God forgive me? Yes, God can forgive you. 
He will never bring those sins up again. Why? Because you are forgiven in Jesus Christ. I, I want to read something that I, uh, I read from a, a great preacher at the beginning of uh, the 20th century, Charles Spurgeon. And uh, he said the following about Jesus, about God. He said, His word is, follow me, not merely that you may be saved, nor even that you may be sanctified, but follow me and I will make you fishers of men. Be following Christ with that intent and aim, and fear that you are not perfect following Him unless uh, in some degree He is making use of you to be fishers of men. The fact is, that every one of us must take to the business of a man catcher. If Christ has caught us, we must catch others. If we have been apprehended of him, we must be his constables to apprehend rebels for him. Let us ask him to give us grace to go a, fish, a fishing and so uh, to care, uh, to cast our nets we may take that we may take a great multitude of fishes all that the holy ghost may raise up from among us some master fishers who shall steal the, uh, sail their boats in many a, a sea surround great shoals of fish i wanted to read this from spurgeon and and you know what this was the cry of a man that was mightily used by god and the cry is the same today. If, if Christ catches you, you need to become a fisher of men. How do you do this? You need to have a passion. And how you, do you develop this passion? It's one by one. You bring people to the Lord one by one. How? You show that you care. You know, God cares. When somebody tells, oh, nobody cares. You know, I'm here alone. I'm desperate. You need to be the one that says, God cares. And you know what? And so do I. And you can pray for that person. And you can teach that person one-on-one. -on -one. Because church is more than doing the service. Ch church is outside of these walls. It's when you show your love for others. Now, we're living in perilous times when fewer and fewer people care. Now, oh my God, this is uh, passing the slides. And, uh, okay. Second Timothy... Chapter 3 and verse 12 warns, This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come, for men shall be lovers of their own selves. These are the times today. This is why we're not seeing passion for souls. It's because people love themselves. You know, when a person tells me, Oh, I like to go to church, but you know, I don't have time. It's because you love yourself more then actually you love God. When you don't have time for God, when you don't have time to come to church to listen to the Word of God, you know, there's something happening inside of you. This is what was prophesied by Paul. And he said, there will be a time when, when people will just care about themselves. And you might be in a difficult situation and you think that nobody cares and you think just about yourself. Remember Psalm 142 verse 4, no man cared for my soul. No, caring is the hallmark of a Christian. It's the defining character trait of a, a genuine born-again believer. They care. When you are born again, you care for people. You know, the biggest problem that we see in Canada, in the, in the, the Eastern world today, is apathy. People are just, you know, relaxed. They, and we talk about God and about the things of God, and it's, there's an apathy. They say, I don't care about these things. I care about, you know, drinking whiskey and playing poker. Or I, I care about, you know, watching movies and going to the ball games. I care about hockey. I care about all these things. But you know what? It's not that God doesn't want you to have fun. But God has a better plan for you. Amen. God cares for you. God has the best for you. 1 Peter 5, 7 certifies that God does in fact care for us. It says, casting all your care upon me, for he cared for you. God cares. God cares. And uh, finally, let me tell you, I, I read a, a, a very funny thing today. Uh, it was on Twitter, a, a tweet by Rick Warren, a pastor that I really appreciate. And he said, if a church 
is reaching out, is passing out. It's a good one, eh? If a church is not reaching out, is passing out. And you know, most churches are passing out. Because people really don't care about others. You might say, oh, I love the Lord, let's go to prayer, let's do this. And those things are important. But if you don't care for others, you know, if you don't show your love in a practical way for your neighbors, for people around you, people that persecute you, people that say bad things about you. You know, the apostles didn't become fishers of men overnight. They had to follow Jesus. They had to be with Him, follow Him. So I want to challenge you today to follow Jesus. And I know that Jesus is not here physically, so I want to challenge you to follow other Christians that are winning souls. And we have quite a few that come here to the services. We have quite a few that keep saying, I care for you, I want to pray for you. That call and say, how are you? How are things going? You know, do you need anything? I want to pray for you. And you need to become that kind of person to others. Because if you're not reaching out, you're passing out. Amen? So let us all stand. And, um, and let's have a word of prayer. We're going to finish our, our service now. We're going to have this time of fellowship. But I would like to pray that God will enable you and help you to have this passion. It's not enough to be saved. To be saved is the first step. But then you need to follow Jesus. Follow Jesus, it, it represents to do the same things that he did. To follow Jesus, it's not to know the hymns that we sing. It's not, it's not knowing the hymns from the books. It's not knowing how to do a good prayer. To follow Jesus is to do the work, the works that he did. That's, that's, that's what represents to follow Jesus. It's not receiving a, a membership card for a church or an income tax receipt at the end of the, of, the, uh, of the year. To follow Jesus, it's a lot more. It's showing others that you care. Now, tell the person next to you, I care. Go, go around and say, I care. I care for you. Amen? Do we, do we really care? All right. So, let's become fishers of men. This is my prayer. And the Lord says, pray to the Lord of the harvest that He will send, what? Workers. Who are the workers? The fishers of men. You know, a church, even if it's a small church, if two or three fishers of men arrive, let me tell you, that makes a difference. Suddenly, you start to see a change in the atmosphere, a change in the environment. You see new people coming. And then you're encouraged to become also a fisher of men. Certain things are done by example. This is why you know, I'm so excited with, the, with this new step in my ministry of going you know, through the city and preaching the gospel to others. Telling others, we care. We, we really care. And then we just need to find you know, those churches that have the nets you know, to bring all those people uh, into a relationship with the Lord. But today, I want to pray for you. Because if there's been a long time that you don't bring anyone to church, you better start now having that passion for the Lord. Because that's what He expects from you. And you know what? When you start doing, doing things like this, then the headaches are gone. You know, then the, the pain is gone. Then that, that infirmity, you know, it's not there anymore. Then you deliver, because this is how the Lord manifests His power. You follow Him, and as you're leaning close to Him, He'll come close to you.